Hi, welcome to the video. I'm the Nuclear Rabbit, and today I am going to be finding out if it's possible for me to beat Diablo 2 while using the Clay Gloss set on Hardcore all the way through Hell. So, why would this even be a challenge? Well, the Clay Gloss set is a level 4 set, and seeing as how most people beat Hell around level 80, it seems on the lower end of the scale of gear to use to do this. Most people also see it as complete trash and don't even pick it up, not even in normal. So, the rules for this challenge run are 1. I give myself the Clay Gloss set. 2. No other items can come from the shared stash. 3. It has to be done in hardcore. 4. I have to beat Bale in hell and become a guardian. So let's get this show on the road. I create an assassin and give myself the set. First things first, what does it take to equip the set? The shield requires level 4 and 22 strength. Fine, sure, no problem. The gloves require level 4 and 25 strength. Yup, 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 all good, sure, sure, sure. The sword requires level 4 just like the others. And 39 dex and 55 strength. So let's see, the assassin starts off with 20 strength and 20 dexterity on level 1. You get 5 stats per level. Let's do some simple math. You need 35 additional strength and 19 additional dexterity. So you need 54 stats at 5 stats per level. So yep, while the sword requires level 4, it actually requires level 13. Well, let's get started and kill some monsters then. I reach level 4 and equip the gloves and the shield. A few level ups later, 9 to be exact, I reach level 13. I finally get to equip the sword, unleashing the full power of it the set. And with full power, I mean the sword deals 3 to 19 damage. Oh dear, that is not a lot of damage. 3 plus 19 gets you 22, so 11 damage on average. A regular topaz nets you 1 to 22 damage. For the math wizards out there, that means 1 plus 22 damage. Netting 23, divide that by 2, getting to a nice 11.5 damage on average. So the clay gloss sword deals less damage than a topaz? Not even a perfect one, just a regular topaz. Oh dear lord. But, but luckily it has deadly strike. Surely that will count for something. It even has 50% of it. 50% deadly strike means it will do double the damage 50% of the time. So it deals 6 to 38 half the time. Netting 44 in total. And let's stay with our topaz for an example. Example, a perfect topaz deals 1 to 40 lightning damage. Combining those gets us 41, and putting it all together that gets us 44 divided by 2 is 22 average damage for the clay gloss sword half of the time, and 41 divided by 2 is 20.5 average damage for a perfect topaz. So half the time it deals a bit less damage than a normal topaz, and the other half of the time it barely out damages a perfect topaz. That seems low. Are we sure this is correct? Yeah, no, it feels like it's wrong. No. Nope, not wrong. Oh no. And because I don't want to bore everyone to death with stats and numbers for too long, we'll talk about the set bonuses later. It's not like they will change anytime soon. I do however have to talk about my choice for the build a bit. See those giant spinning discs on the screen? Those are blade sentinels. Because we are doing this with the blades in. I have a couple of reasons for that. First off, I made a joke in one of my Bladesin videos about the clay gloss set being good for a Bladesin, and people hated that joke so fucking much it had one of the worst viewer drop offs I have ever seen on the channel. I don't know why, but people really, really fucking hated that joke. And because I am nothing if not a vindictive little man, this entire video ID popped into my head because of that. Okay, so I said a couple of reasons, but this is actually the only one. So look, spite is a perfectly valid reason to do things, okay? Yeah. It's just spite. I have no other reasons, it's just spite. In the meanwhile, we have saved Kane and picked up a Tal rune and two more, but no ether runes, so we don't have a stealth. No damage, no stealth. It's gonna be one of those kind of runs, isn't it? I convinced the smith that I will build a house for him if I can only borrow his hammer for a bit. He agrees to this, but I promptly murder him anyway. Same with Antario. The tomb gets a bit messy, but we finish up Duriel. In Act 3 I find an Ath rune, finally completing my stealth before dealing with Mephisto. Respectively clearing out Act 1, 2 and 3, ha ha ha. In Act 4, Hephaesto drops us an early soul rune, which is useful to make a lore with, a rune what you usually get in Nightmare. I go ahead and clear out the Chaos Sanctuary and head into the Diablo fight, which at this point I have talked about so often I quite literally don't know what to say about it anymore, so here's some music and I'll see you all on the other side.
in Act 5, I go ahead and kill Shank and grind Eldritch for some levels, during which I find a Dusk Deep. And while its classic glory days are over, it's still a hell with 15 resist all, maximum damage and a bunch of flat damage reduction. Saving the barbs gets me an Ord rune, netting me the other half of the lore rune word. I also defeat the entire point of a shield by letting Larsuk make a hole in it, which I quickly plug by putting a diamond in the hole. I follow all of that up by getting rid of Bale, who draws me Shaco's little brother Peasant Crown and Hassara's boot, which means that while I unfortunately only have one head, I have three helms to choose from. Perfect. Just perfect. Before heading into Nightmare, I go ahead and gamble a belt and get myself another amulet in the terror zones. Nightmare starts off with picking up the scroll of Iniverse and saving Kane. The ring I get as a reward is a small upgrade, but definitely not an endgame gear worthy ring. A few minutes later I find a second ring in the Black March, another small improvement, but nothing special. A group of goatmen drops me an amazing 8 resist all large charm. And the counters drops a light belt with stats, life, lightning and fire resist. The Andario fight goes very smooth, so I move along into Act 2, where I pick up the amulet and make my way into the Maggot Lair. The Maggot Lair for a lot of builds as well, how can I put this nicely? Well, shit. However, the Blade Sin is a character that focuses on funneling characters into a line and picking them off one by one. So in the Maggot Lair you don't actually have to do anything except hold the button, making it one of the best places to play with this character. I get myself a bit stuck in the Arcane Sanctuary, but make it past the Summoner, who is of course followed up by Turiel. Him knocking me out of my Blade Fury is a problem, so I decide to just use the Blade Sentinels to get the kill. I go ahead and finish up Act 2 by completing the Radamant quest and head into Act 3. Following that up, I craft a few rings, one netting me poison resist and the other netting me cold and fire and even more attack rating. Seriously, this character is drowning in attack rating. Might be the first melee character ever to not have attack rating problems. Act 3 starts off with me going eye for an eye with Cesark, an intense fight that I follow up by having a relaxing walk through the forest. As usual, I also pick up the Kid Bin and the Brain, for which Ormus rewards me with another ring upgrade. Speaking of rings, I also find a set one in the sewers, and some more Hazaras boots. I take a ton of damage on the way to Travancore, but do end up fighting the council, which goes just swimmingly because they are slow, I have a wide open area to work with and have a combat shrine. into the two rounds of hate greets me once again with my favorite thing in the entire game, running away from dolls. But luckily, because this character has range and might be the actual best user of knockback in the entire scope of character classes in the game, I just get to knock them back and easily take them down. So I didn't almost die while kiting them around in a circle, twice. Moving along, after that I decided that I was sick of this shit and just ran through. I get stuck at the end, but I can't throw a sentinel because of all the dolls, so another save and exit is added to the collection. Much to the chagrin of that one person in my comment section who told me he gave me a dislike because I use save and quits. My man, or woman, this one's for you. So for everyone out there, if you're thinking, man this guy used to save and quit, I hate him, just go. Your opinion is wrong and you should just leave, it's fine. We all have that at times. Except me of course. The second run through around the Torans also involves a bunch of dolls. Luckily this time I didn't get stuck so I didn't almost die anyway and make it to Mephisto who goes down cleanly. Cause even though I am using the clay gloss set and its damage is pretty trash, the rest of my gear is actually stacked as hell. Pun obviously intended cause I am all about those bad jokes. Seriously, if you hate puns, my videos are very pun-ishing. I pick up my two skill points and a Lum rune, feel like a stepsister to some Venom Lords and head into the Diablo fight. I get close enough to take a good whiff and start throwing sentinels. That gets stuck outside of the pentagram? Seriously? What in the fuck? Why? What? How? So I switch up to Blade Fury and finish him off that way. Diablo shows he is a man of style and drops his gloves on the ground upon death as the loser of a true duel. 
I look at them and they turn out to be a pair of 37% chance cards that I can't use because I have to use the clear glass set. I go back to normal and buy a 2 socket armor and a 3 socket shield. I make an ancient splash in the shield because it seems like an upgrade over the actual literal just nothing Barani is wearing. And even though his resists are already looking very maxed, we're still in normal. If they weren't here we'd have a big problem. Once he reaches hell however he will be very happy with this ancient splash. Next up I get myself a nev rune and use it combined with the lum rune to get myself a smoke. Seriously hussar's boots, smoke, peasant's crown. This character has turned out stacked. I feel like I am invincible at this point. So of course act 5 starts off by telling me to eat shit as the burning archers kick my teeth in with their arrows. Quickly flushing my pride away seconds after I told myself I did good. In the frigid highlands I go ahead and save the barbie girls. Telling them they are my doll. Rock and roll and they can do whatever they please in Harrogate. They can even hit town, fool around and go party. Speaking about parties the lightning is already firing on all cylinders in the frozen river as I encounter another group of souls, with Shadow Vex being physical immune even. No worries though, Jelani's got that covered. I go ahead and make the content play on an evil urn, spawning me a pile of clones straight in my face. Totally worth it. But between my max resist and the enchant damage they aren't much of a problem. Rewarded with an additional 10 resist all, I go ahead and move towards the ancients. Jelani goes down during my first attempt and I almost immediately follow him as my life total gets dangerously low. Seriously, I survived that on the skin of my teeth. A quick reminder that slow on a whirlwind barbarian is still extremely dangerous. But wait, aren't the ancients in Nightmare supposed to be an easy fight? Like shouldn't they be almost free? Well, my dear viewer, yes, they should be. They should be almost free. My damage just sucks. So with that in mind, for the rest of the fight I decide to change up my strategy. No more getting close to them. I am a ranged character after all. And with that, they go down. First Madoc, followed up by Korlik and Talik is the last to go. In the Wilson Keep it dawns on me that sometimes you get a run where you find every item you ever want. Sometimes you get a run where every map is amazing. Sometimes everything is just nice and easy. And sometimes the game just really, 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 really tries to kill you. And we are not even at the hard part of the game yet. My damage is already lacking and I have encountered more souls and dolls than I can shake a stick at. Yup, it's one of those runs. Which isn't helped by me mindlessly clicking on a fire shrine in the middle of fighting. The throne of destruction decided to prove my thesis even further. I run in and get swarmed immediately by dolls, forcing me to run in deep before checking what's in there. Which of course is some more souls. I decide to run through anyway. What could possibly go wrong after all? It's not like I'm Bubsy or anything. So I decide to just run to the back, ignoring everything and hoping for the best. I start getting rid of the bail waves. The first four waves go fine, but Lister and his friends don't care about my knockback at all and force me back out into the main part of the throne of destruction again. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, I'd actually kind of like it, a big tunnel to lure everything away should be fine. However I just ran through, I did not get rid of all the souls and dolls. So surrounded by everything I would find in a nightmare I have but one option and that is to save and quit. Second attempt creates me at the start with a pack of souls, so third attempt we go. Not gonna lie, third attempt isn't exactly looking better or anything, but after making it past that one stupid corner with souls, the bail fight is an ode to slow and crushing blow, and with the power of those two combined, bail is not much of a challenge. To improve my rune situation, I decide to do some more counters runs. On the way there, I end up finding a set amulet in the black marsh. It turns out to be an angelic wings granting me the fabled combo of attack rating and life if I want it, which I don't because my amulet and my rings are amazing. I upgrade my belt so it gets 4 slots. I use a hell rune to remove the diamond from my shield and put a perfect diamond in its place. And at the low low cost of a socket quest and a perfect diamond I have now upgraded my shield to the shittiest ancient splash mankind has ever seen. But without it I wouldn't have all of those cool set bonuses like crushing blow and mana leech. It also gets 20 increased attack speed which doesn't work with my skills. It also nets me 100 defense, a stat a lot of my commenters deem very important. So yeah it's a crappy ancient splash. 
but it gets us crushing blow and mana leech. Works for me, I suppose. After all the counters runs, I have a ton of gold, so I decide to do some gambling for boots, which proves worthwhile as I gamble two pair of amazing shoes. One pair gives fire resist and the other gives poison and lightning resist, meaning I can just switch them up depending on where I am and what I need. The final thing I do before heading into hell is socketing my peasant crown. I decide to put a thaw rune in it because I just gambled all the other resist, which means doing it like this and nicely rounds it all out. And with that it is time, hell time. It starts off with the Den of Evil, where I use the knockback of the gloves to, well, knock back the monsters while Jelani takes care of them. Woohoo for teamwork! The Gold Plains is actually a great place for leveling, so I decide to go do some level farming there by picking off the weaker packs like Fallen's and Shamans. And even if we pretend the Klegos set was doing fine and the damage was okay in Nightmare, it really, really, really runs out of steam in hell. In the Underground Passage, things slow down to an absolute crawl, which means I just lose my patience and start running around looking for the exit. Cause that totally isn't a giant risk that would entail me having to do all of this over again. I knock back on wood against the Lord of the Rings extras as I pretend that Tree Head Woodfist isn't kindly kicking my ass. He goes down and I release Gandalf from his cage, a decision I regret once I look at the trash I get for it. I'm sure the One Ring is out there, but this ain't it. I'd guess at this point that a lot of people have noticed and angrily commented about me not using Fate even though I'm in hell, so I'm just going to explain my choice. My resists are very good, I'm one of max on two of them, and the other two are maxed, and I have a reasonable enough, although not stacked to the gills amount of life. The biggest thing that will kill me at this point is getting stepsisters by a bunch of monsters. I try and stun dock the smith, however he decides that he is sick of my shit and just walks up and starts slapping me, so I go ahead and run away. I make it all the way to the jail level 3 before I get stuck between some monsters and have to save an exit again. Man, it's almost like I knew this was coming and decided that this just right now would be a good time to explain why I spec the way I did. It almost looks intentional. I kite Andy around, allowing me to slowly but surely chip away at her life total and all I have to do now is not try and tank her, which is very hard because standing still and tanking her means I could finish the fight 0.00001% of a second faster. A risk totally worth almost the entire run. But despite my damage being very low, the slow and crushing blow once again prevail and the bare naked lady goes down. The black raptors in the desert drop me an ethereal treasure. No sockets in it yet, but an excellent base for if I want it, which I obviously do, otherwise this part wouldn't be in the script. In the lost city, a plant I thought I could easily walk around stops me in my tracks. Luckily, with just a few night terrors following me, I am able to clear my way out again. The Claw of Hyper Temple, however, is where the Clay Claw set hits its limit. I, for the life of me, cannot clear this room filled with guardians and bone warriors. My damage just isn't getting there and everything is out healing me. I try picking off the unique guardian in the corner, but alas, the bone warriors come up to me and I have to kite again. In the meanwhile, everything has gotten back to full HP. Desperation overcomes me. I still have three and a half act to go and things will only get harder from here and bigger problems will come my way. So I start running around, looking for a way to escape from the immediate danger. However, the monsters have trapped me in, blocking all the doors. In a moment of cursed desperation, I see an open door and run into it, allowing me back to the start of the Claw Viper Temple. I use my newfound exit to lure all the skeletons out and run back in to try and face the guardians again. However, no such luck, they still out heal me. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know anything, but the unique guardian blocking the door has kindly fucked up. I run through the door, breathing a sigh of relief I never have to face these monsters again. And in level 2, I just snipe the embalmed off the plateau and claim the amulet of the Viper Magi. The Maggot Lair is a nice change of pace. Man, I never expected to say those words. With everything lining up in perfect order again, I casually make my way through, using the poison from the Venom skill to deal with the physical immunes. However, my perfect setup screeches to a halt as in one of the dead ends, the Beatles overpower Jelani and corner me, forcing me to leave the game before claiming my prize. The second attempt goes much better and I claim the Staff of Kings as my trophy. The Harem level 2 adds a plus 1 to the save and quit counter and level 3 forces me to do some fancy footwork before I can get in the portal. The Arcane Sanctuary is another place where things just stand up in a line and get knocked back to oblivion, so I make it through without any problems. This apparently is so impressive that the summoner goes from a unique monster to a normal monster. Didn't know that could happen, but here we are. The Taurus's tomb is tedious, but doable. Well, at first, because at the first sign of Unravelous, my PTSD kicks in and I start running through the tomb like a madwoman. Luckily, I get a good map and make my way to Duriel. 
who thanks to the power of patience and kiting goes down without a problem. Because my damage being low isn't as much of a problem as long as the bosses are taking more damage than I am. The venom and crushing blow also help a lot. I use the sentinels on him cause just like in Nightmare he keeps knocking me out of blade fury. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, things start off with getting pushed back by a group of hunters. Luckily I managed to isolate them all and managed to chill Valentine my way through them. The next boss, ironically named the Sharp, gets stuck behind a wall, so I just easily snipe him from afar. I even managed to knock him so far back that I had to walk up to him. When he dies, he throws me a set Chaos Armor, which is ironic, cause I promised to do a triangle video and ended up doing this instead, and now I find the armor. Haha, <laughs> isn't that funny? The irony. Funny stuff, right? Guys, 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 hello, hello, anybody? In the spider cavern I encounter another brick wall for my build, a physical fire immune. Even though I have venom, he is just out healing that. I need to come up with a plan. And that plan involves a lot of me running past everything and deciding that actually playing the game is for suckers. However, I get stuck again and the save and quit counter adds another one to the tally. On my second go around, I clear the monsters without a problem, that is, until I reach Cesar, who is this round's fire physical immune. I try to take him down with the poison damage from venom, however, he out heals it. So once again, my damage just isn't cutting it and I need to come up with a plan, preferably one that doesn't involve me running and getting stuck this time. I go back to town and hire Fungi a gold based mercenary and together we attack Cesar, me using my knockback to push the spider back and Fungi using his cold spells to actually deal damage to the giant spider. The arachnid is extremely tanky but does end up going down. The flayer dungeon is filled with dolls, however with knockback they aren't much of a problem. The ruined temple however is, with my damage being too low I once again get pushed back. I regroup at the door and go in for a second attempt but get swamped right there at the entrance so I run out again, deciding that stat points are for nerds and I'm never looking back. The council can do nothing against knockback and have very little poison resist, so I just stun like them all until they die and give me the flail. The Durants of Hate gives me dolls again, so I go for the good old strategy of knocking them back and easily clearing them, which immediately fails and has me only surviving an explosion because it didn't become a critical hit. The dolls get knocked back, but come up close again, cause I'll never keep them down, but they get very close to getting me down. Cause even though I'm winning, one of them explodes in my face, almost ending the run. The Mephisto fight isn't too bad, once again my damage is low so I have to throw blades to and fro, but with enough patience, down he does go. Act 4 starts off with a strangely familiar feeling of me getting pushed back into a corner because my damage is too low. It's become a recurring thing at this point and I didn't even like it the first time. With some kiting around I do end up taking soul burn down, but can we please stop with the getting pushed back at every point, I just wanna win the run already. We can't? <sighs> okay fine then. Just a tiny bit into the outer steps, I encounter another might pack. This time however I make a mistake kiting them and lock myself into a corner. The save and quit counter is eating well today. The planes of despair once again prove their name as the game continues to give me the worst possible enemies at every single point, this time giving me a pile of souls. I could just reset, but I decide that my lightning resists are high enough and I should just clear them. Which is exactly what I do, souls are very class cannon, so all I need to do is separate them one by one and take them down. One very dangerous, unique soul with a conviction hour later I make it a full two more steps before I reach the next boss pack. This really turned into one of those runs where all the game is trying to do is murder your face off. In the river of flame I get to take it easy and snipe the demons from across the bridge. The Chaos Sanctuary starts off with Ash Burn the Flayer, who luckily does care about my knockback, meaning I get to let Jabari take his life total. For the rest of the Chaos Sanctuary I use the natural funnels at the beginning to their fullest effect and let the Venom Bloods get stuck because of the knockback on the gloves. The open area however is a very different tale. Here I have to kite around again, making the Venom Bloods chase me while they run through the Sentinels. I try to deal with yet another physical fire immune in the same way as all the others, while wondering why there are so goddamn many of them in this run. All in all just bad spawns all around for this one. He takes forever to go down, so I end up luring him to the back and just running from the start again to get rid of him. The rest of the sanctuary went without chaos. 
And for the Diablo fight, I just had to get up close and accept that I don't really deal any more damage except for Crushing Blow anymore. After the Diablo fight, I decided I wanted to do the Hellforge as well, so I go ahead and knock a Fasto back a few bags. As my reward, a Malrun drops. Nothing I can do with it, but good to have. In the bloody foothills, I have a hard time passing Shank, but I do manage to run through in the end. At this point in the run, my damage feels mostly irrelevant, but I get my socket quest and decide to socket the treasure I found all the way back in Act 2. I put the runes for honor in it. A rune word that gives plus 1 skills, a ton of enhanced damage, life leech and 25% deadly strike. Quite an amazing weapon and I will happily hand it off to my mercenary. However, there is a problem with Asab as my mercenary. He seems to ignore everything in his path, except that one tower over there. He really hates that tower. And I am left to deal with life on my own. It's like I've hired my own dad right before he went out for milk. During my travels I came across a bone weave. I decided this is a perfect armor to try and draw sockets into. If it gets four sockets I can try and see if I can persuade Asab to attack things other than the one tower. I get the roll and get the four sockets and put in a bunch of resistances and some damage prevention. The Ancients fight is a brutal slog, my damage is flimsy at best and there is no way I'm taking all three of them at the same time. It's not Friday after all, so I need to separate them. First up is Madoc, with Asab able to tank him and even deal a bit of damage to him, it is a matter of time before he leaves this earthly plane. Next up, Talik, who thanks to my slow now has the most dangerous whirlwind this side of Harrogate. So what I end up doing is luring him into a corner where he should not spin around. However, I get it wrong and he keeps spinning. Asab falls to his flurry of attacks before I finally get him in the correct spot and I'm able to take him down. With that it is time for the final 1v1, which sounds epic but is actually really easy to dodge leap attack. So I lure him into a corner where he won't leap attack cause it would mean he would jump off a cliff and I also hope he doesn't look around cause there's kind of a lot of blood on the floor and just tank him cause his damage is almost as bad as mine. With that the angels are done, time for the final push. It starts off with seeing my old friends, the souls in the corner. Luckily there aren't too many of them and I am able to take them out, which is followed up by walking around the corner and getting full on lasers. What I didn't know yet though, was that there are unravelers here as well. Souls are undead, so they get revived. Realizing I can't ever beat this combination, I decide to once again just gun it and start running. The Hell Witches dropped me a set amulet, which turns out to be another Angelic's amulet. Seriously, why not on a character that actually wants it, or needs it? I make short work of the Bale Waves, who all go down pretty easily. Except for Lister, again, who needs to be different, again. Seriously, there's always one guy like that in every single group, but between Asab's Holy Freeze and my knockback, he doesn't stand a chance. Which brings us to the Bale fight, and honestly, it's pretty free. Bale falls like wet origami under the effect of slow. I don't have enough to completely brick him, but even with him being slowed down 25%, it's such a game changer that I am easily able to take him down. And as I do my final gear and setup showing for the run, I can look back and answer the question this all started with. Can I beat Diablo 2 on hardcore all the way through hell with the clay gloss set? Yes. Yes I can, and even though it's a set and for a level 4 character, it has enough power to clear the game. Honestly though, you'd rather not, like there's so much that's better than this. Seriously, like using a black rune word and an ancient splash is just better than this entire set. But, as I just showed, you can definitely do it. To explain some final stuff, the build I used is called a blade in, meaning I spec into all three of the blade skills, the rest of my points are into venom and I have a point into burst of speed. Stat wise I have strength and dex for gear and the rest into vitality. And with that I have just one thing left to say, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please consider subscribing or even becoming a member, it truly helps more than you could think. Thank you all for watching, see you in the next one.